Hey everyone, welcome back to Jiraki Cup 16. I hope you're ready to see some, uh, some... I don't even know what I can say without getting, without getting slaughtered by Jeff Bezos. Point is, this is gonna be horrible, so avert your eyes if you don't want to see. It's myself versus Puppy, this is from Group A. And let's go ahead and watch, or look at the uh, Info.txt here. Whoops, see Daisy. So as you can see, I, I grabbed Savon for the first game. I'm going to grab Galzian Territories. My opponent plays Coalition. Uh, this is perfect for me, because what I want to do is the uh, the Savon Carrier Rush strat. And for the next game, it's going to be Coalition versus Galzian, and Puppy picks Canyon Outpost. And I kind of thought to myself, well, that's a mistake, because that's obviously a very good aggro map, and it's me, so, you know, he's going to he's gonna die to death. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see if that uh, plays out how I'm expecting. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably shouldn't pick maps like uh, g uh, Canyon Outpost if you want to go SC first against someone like me. Speaking of SC first, that is going to be the game plan for me because what I need to do is get my uh, get my carrier unlocked as fast as I can. Although actually, on the two CUs, it almost looks like I'm not going to go for this uh, carrier rush game plan. Huh, maybe not. I played these a while ago. I don't have enough memory to store this sort of thing. <laughs> I'm too busy storing facts about trebuchets that I can pick up Lima, you know? Yeah, if I'm taking LEV Fab ever, that means I'm not doing the carry rush. So it looks like this is gonna be a bit more of a standard game. Checking the time there, still got two hours to go. <laughs> Probe's gonna fly out here, it sees the LAVs chasing me. So now I know my opponent is going for some kind of an attack. He's got care production upgrade, in fact. I think this is a little bit difficult to make work against the Coalition Savon opponent, because they'll go for AEVs and sort of ruin your day. I think I actually overbuilt on salvagers. This guy's probably not meant to be made at this point, but... <laughs> well, I like to see the 3v3 players in the in the tournaments, of course, but... Yeah, this probably is not gonna... Probably is not gonna work out too well for him. Tell us a bit about Puppy. I actually don't know much about him. Um... I, I know for sure he hasn't been in the Draki Cup before. Lieutenant Morning, what is thinking about joining? Yes, do it, do it. Unfortunately, I think that the next one we're running is probably going to be Anomaly Cup. Although, we want to see all of you in there for sure, alright? Because that's going to be freaking hilarious. But... <laughs> I really can't wait for that. But after that, we'll probably want to run a Draki Cup, so maybe three months? I hesitate to give, uh... Oh, look at this cute little TV, though. I hesitate to give time frames though, because you know how I am with time frames. They, they typically don't work out too well. <laughs> good, good. <gasps> Hero LAV is gonna survive! Oh no, he doesn't quite make it. Oh. That is a sad day. Wait a minute, I am walking here as puppy? Oh. Oh. Alright, well there we go. Yeah, Last Rites will still play sometimes, but he doesn't post on his channel at all as far as I've seen. Welcome to the Dreamlands. <laughs> In the, uh, let's see, what is this? In the east, we have the uh, Saban forces of Bozo Cow. And in the west... <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but... No, I, I wish he was still making videos. I really liked uh, having more content creators on the field. Plus, he got lots of views somehow. But... Yeah, I know, he's got two children, I think, maybe even three, so... He's definitely a busy man. He's got things to do. Oh, he's gonna snipe me on the artifact. Evil. But still, Puppy can't really win this engagement in the... in the, uh... in the field, because... You know, I've got AVs out, so... 
<laughs> oh, is that the reason? <laughs> I just need to fix my broken personality and I'll get more views. Huh? No, if I want views, I just need to make Raiden it like we stole it. It's clear that everyone wants more of that, which is why I'm never making any. Anyway, March of the AVs here. They are going to reach the main base, probably. We do have Railgun Fab finishing for Puppy, which is good. That's what he needs. <laughs> Cast Topless. Yeah, Railgun Fab, definitely what he needs here, but it's just a little bit late, so it's going to be a bit tough. Subcasting. <laughs> Draw up a bath and bring my PC into the bathroom. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a good idea. But... Well, you can see Puppy is doing a pretty good job of killing off some of these AVs. He's keeping himself alive here, but he is losing quite a lot of mining time, and I think I killed the salvager if I saw that right. Yeah, there's nine here. There should be ten. And all the while, I'm sort of buying time for myself to get up on 3 base and build some ACs, which I'm making. <laughs> yeah, beaches of Karak. That's, that's definitely not what you associate with this planet. <laughs> Although it is all sand, I'll say that. Which, as we know, is coarse, rough, irritating, and gets everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I need to do if I want to get views. You won't believe the game that I cast! Enemy contact on the board. Adjusting waypoints. Tracking enemy target in the area. Looks like the first AC is coming out. And uh, Railgun Fab on the way for me as well. I, I like the ACs, but I think that actually on this map they're probably not too good because it's just so open. So, you know. I'm gonna be getting railguns eventually, and it kind of feels like the AC build path was a bit wasted here. I'd really like ACs to get field control when your opponent in, and you are fighting for it, but in this case it kind of felt like it wasn't terribly useful. By the way, love to see this, what Puppy is doing to get the um, line of sight with the railguns. Perfect. This is, this is how you want to do it. And I can smoke to buy some time, but realistically I'm gonna to have to evacuate this point now. So you see, gonna try to smoke the AEDs and just do what damage I can on the base, although I'm targeting the SC, which is not what I wanted here. Really nice smoke from Puppy, by the way. And it looks like I'm not gonna get anything. So actually, that was like a really well done defense there. Well, time for the railgun spam. <laughs> and again, you know, the AC is on the field about at the time that it's not useful anymore, so... Definitely feels like this is a bit of an odd uh, tech choice for me. What I can probably do with this guy is just keep him at the carrier to protect the railguns in case uh, LAVs come out to attack me, but I think in this game I'm gonna actually use him out on the flank. Um, barely. I mean, it's, it's tough, but it can be done. You can see in this case, as I'm taking Mag Excel, I can't do it, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I want the AC to... ...look stupid, I guess. <laughs> it was not the right call in this game. Yeah, more so than Dunes, if there are rocks, especially. ACs are really good, though, if there are, um... ...a lot of AVs and LAVs from your opponent, and you can just get field control with it. But this was always gonna be a railgun gun. I mean, look at the map, you know? It was just a dumb choice, it's not two ways about that. I like the marked target hitting the unit that nobody else is targeting, by the way. But yeah, no, they, they were definitely not the call. And my opponent, by the way, he's gonna be building LAVs now, so this is where actually this AC could be useful. I just need to keep him up with the railguns here, but... I guess my brain was just turned off during this match, so... <laughs> I'm just gonna move him out to the side where he can flank, which is good, but... Not as good. Uh, with enough SCs and Armor 3, it will be hard to kill these railguns, but certainly not impossible. So this, these LAVs are a good uh, tech choice for Puppy. Tech choice? Can you even call him that? Good army call, I guess. And you can see, he's got a lot of them. It'd be nice to turn on Mark Target on one of these guys here. But... 
That way, you know, the railguns can be a little bit more effective. By the way, generally not a good idea to leave your LADs where they can get shot at. Because <laughs> then this happens, but... Also, the LEVs don't want to fight the AC, that's for sure. Although, with the railguns in tow, they can actually probably kill it. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's gonna try to fight it off with just the railguns here, and then the LEVs can finish the kill. AC is using heal, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, the way that A-Game did the damage for the Railguns versus uh, LAVs, they actually have the same DPS as they did in Vanilla, I think, anyway. It's just that they don't, um, they don't miss, which makes them more consistent, so. When you have that many Railguns, they would still kill LAVs in Vanilla, is what I'm saying, just not quite as fast. This AC actually lived, by the way. I don't think it would have if the LAVs had jumped while it was still sundered. But... Hero Assault Cruiser. And this is actually 4 out of 5 on the artifacts too, but it looks like I want the kill instead. Yeah, but in Jiraki, when they hit Strikecraft, they do only like 30% of the damage or something. Oh hey, another AC! <laughs> That's definitely what I need. Wow, I'm building a lot of them. So yeah, basically the calculation is that they'll do about the same DPS, but they're more consistent. Which I think is really nice. Well, this game wasn't really such a walkover as I expected. I thought I was going to do the carrier rush nonsense, but... Shows how good my memory is. We'll move into game two, though. And that will be on Cannon Outpost. Again, that's Puppy's pick. Yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not fun to play against, but it's a lot of fun to do. We'll see if we get to my games versus Phoenix here today. I think we will. And then you'll get to see it in action. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. But if you remember, it was uh, Hottest Man Ever who did that first. And it was, like, amazingly powerful. I can't remember who it is that he took a game off of with that, but it was someone who was really good that, you know... You would expect, yeah, this will be a fun match, but Hottest Man Ever probably doesn't win. But then he pulled out this bizarre carrier rush and won. We'll, we'll get to see that a bit more in action when I'm playing against Phoenix Seal, but... For now, here we are in Canyon Outpost. Sandskimmer Fab coming out for me, PC is moving out, I think you know the game plan here. Although if you watch the eco, um, I think it should be clear I'm going for assault chips, yeah that is what it's gonna be. Now you want to not, uh, you want to not move this PC out too far because if your opponent has a bunch of LAVs it can actually die. So I'm gonna keep this thing tucked away where it's a little bit safer for now. Tom said he used to do it in the shallows, really? Oh, that's pretty fun. So Hottest Man Ever learned it from Tom? Because I always just called it the Hottest Man Ever Rush, because I didn't really know what else to call it. But... HME, the guy who would do uh, One PC Assault Chips in Vanilla back before that was the meta as well. It's really kind of a smart player. <laughs> Looks like for, uh, for Puppy it is going to be an SC first. He's got the probe coming out. And that will unfortunately die here, I believe. Yeah, it looks like the probe does just get killed there. But he saw the rush, and that's what's really important. So now he needs to try to get a turret set down to protect himself. And because he's only got five mining on the main, he might as well send this guy to work over here. Just in the meantime. But he's got the money for the turret. Oh wait, no, I have the money for the turret, which tells us that the base runner can drop it. And a DOK replay is flawless as always. He's gonna have the money for the turret. So you can see I'm trying to shoot the base runner with the skins because I really don't want him to get that thing set down. Oh, 
But either way, we get seen with the assault ships as well. The carrier's gonna move out to try and block. He does have the SC, so he's... He's retiring his salvagers! Oh no! Okay, I didn't catch that happening in-game. Uh, GG, I guess we can go next. <laughs> okay, don't, don't do this, alright? When you retire your salvagers, you get some money back for it, yeah, but... You end up basically doing the damage that your opponent was looking for, and I was not gonna make it in with one uh, assault ship there, so that was actually really bad for uh, for Puppy. <laughs> oh dear. Like, if I knew that that had happened, I didn't see it, but if I had, I would just be like, okay, I'll get ref mode, I'll go back to my two base, and then I'll win the game, you know? But... <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think much more has to be said about that. Don't ever do it. <clears throat> Either that, or maybe I would tech railguns here and just kind of win off of a rail push, but... But my idea here was that I could back up and go into ref mode, but I think I'll try and, uh... Assume that my opponent is going to push a little bit too aggressively to get up onto his two base, and then I'll jump in with more soul chips and win like that. <laughs> but wouldn't the past tense of weep be woke? Jesus woke. Anyway, you can see I'm building these guys up in the backside where <laughs> where they're hopefully not going to get seen. And the idea is to come around and attack over here, but my opponent has AVs already, so I think I'm going to end up just pushing through on this angle. <laughs> Wepted. Yes, that would be it. Both of us are healed up, by the way. Coalition heals faster with that SC, but... Still nice for the Galzian forces. And now the PC will come back home, so we're probably going to see ref mode, and in the meantime, these assault ships will attempt to attack. <laughs> Give the probe the sunder ability. Maybe, maybe for joke patch, my friend. Maybe. <laughs> no, they're already so good in joke patch. But yeah, this turret is set up, which is going to force me to back away here. I think that assault ship will die as well. So, you know, I guess I felt like it was worth a try, but... Just with one turret, I feel like my opponent has requisite defense here. If I could have my assault ships attacking from this angle, maybe it would be different, but... Just gonna go ref mode instead, second PC on the queue, and... We'll move on to intercept the fab later. No, they still get it right after uh, AVs, and I think that the tech is even cheaper, but I might be wrong. I think that, um, in general, railguns are less powerful in Jiraki, though, so you would not want to just go for them immediately, but sometimes we see people go for it. LAV rail is sometimes a build. <laughs> Arik mode. No, no, Arik would always go AVs into railguns, right? Plus, that gives him the uh, heavy vehicles armor upgrades, too. I'm actually, like, killing my opponent's carrier with assault ships here. <laughs> Do I go interceptors? Maybe I go siege this game, but... I think I go interceptors. Now that tech is expensive in second direct, you know, I'll tell you what. Siege? And it's... Oh, I do both. Yeah, why not, why not do both, I guess. Well, I could pick Siege right now if I wanted it, so that tells me probably not first. By the way, turret good. Turret good. <laughs> yeah, bombers are just rude, but I like it as well. Yes, Siege tech is, tech is extremely cheap for Galzian. And for Conef, I think it's more expensive, but... Galzian Siege is kind of an interesting unit in, uh, in Draki in general, because it's very cheap. Um, its barrage is not very good, but it comes off cooldown very fast, so you're kind of supposed to use, like, a lot of them. Oh, hey, it's Couch Foul. I believe we're casting you versus... No, no, we're casting Orb versus Frog after this. But we cast your games versus uh, Orbnet just before. 
The barrage? Uh, yes, but the cooldown is a lot shorter. So... Yes and no, I guess. Yeah, that was my thoughts exactly. <laughs> Oh, it is going to be Bonner's. Maybe I'll cancel that, because I do remember me going Siege in this game. Maybe I just have Bonner's as well, I don't know. A little bit of a, uh, little bit of an arms race on the bridge here, but obviously I do win this. If I wanted to, I could push out, but probably I'm not, because I'm expecting there's turrets on the third. But Puppy, he knows what's going on here. I think that the probe caught the air tech. Uh, I was trying to build that base runner and shoot down the probe before he could see it, but I was a little bit too late. So he's got an anti-air turret post, he's building, or he's teching missile ship fab already. Oh, look at this, I did push out across the bridge. But yeah, bombers are on the way. It didn't? Oh, so this is just blind, huh? It's a good read. I will say, if your opponent is building a base runner to shoot down your probe, you can probably guess he's trying to hide his air tech anyway, so... Yeah, but that is definitely the right call here, yeah, because it's not only interceptors, I'm building bombers too, so... And yeah, my opponent has a lot of anti-air already, so that's good for him. And I see the missile batteries here with the assault ships too, so I'm kind of like, oh darn. But I might be able to snipe out the anti-air turret post and kill maybe one of the missile batteries and the bombers can take care of the other one, but it's always a little bit tough. Wouldn't really recommend SCAA here because it's very expensive and it's not really good unless you have a lot of support cruisers. So it looks like the idea for the air units right now is going to be to... Oh, I thought they were going to target the railguns that the assault ships could get in. Yeah, it looks like for now just targeting missile batteries here. And maybe we'll get the railgun on the way out. No, it looks like it's going to survive. A bit unfortunate with the ammo capacity timing here. I could actually circle the bombers around to get them that upgrade before they return to carrier, but... If you didn't know, there's a bug that they don't get this upgrade unless they were made, quote-unquote, after the upgrade was done, and it remakes the bomber every time it docks, so... So this one will get the anti-air upgrade, this one that's docking, oh, it's invisible to uh, But the other one probably will not. I always like doing this, using interceptors to shoot down probes. Oh. Ow! Okay, now he has to talk, but... It's <laughs> a lot of skims, by the way. You know, when you're building air, air is really expensive on RUs, you always end up with a couple of extra skims, but it's not clear what I'm gonna do with them, so... We'll keep our eyes on that. But right now, I actually feel like Puppy's army comp is pretty good. He's, uh... He's pushing me across the bridge, and it's not because I'm laying a trap for him. I really just can't really fight him here. He's got three missile batteries, so the air isn't worth uh, too much yet, and... The railguns sort of answer the assault ships, so I don't exactly know what to do in this scenario. He sees the skims here, so maybe I can kind of convince him to back up. Uh, but for now, the missile battery is definitely too close, I'll tell you that much. Although, the mortar is good, apparently. Looks like this bomber will die. It gets away! Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, Kaushmao is right, but I think the missile batteries were too far forward there, which allowed them to get hit by the assault ships and die. But his army comp was actually good. I mean, that was a little bit tough for me to do. There are some turrets for defense, but there's enough skims, I should be able to fight my way through these. And it looks like for now I'm gonna invest the skims to take out these railguns. It's kind of an odd state where I don't really want the, sk uh, the sand skimmers, but I have them, so I gotta find a way to use them. This is a very good way to use them, killing off these railguns. And it looks like the carrier will move out as well. You can see I was headed toward the bridge to try to answer the, um, answer the push here, but I don't need it anymore. And see, just coming out. 
Uh, and Siege will give me finally a good answer to the railguns that doesn't rely on my opponent making mistakes. Yeah, Couch Mal has been giving me the fun challenge of trying to make sure to use the right pronoun when casting. It's easy when everybody is he. It's very easy. <laughs> this fight here, I don't think I win. This better just have the mortar as well. Oh, and with the railguns, definitely don't win this now. In fact, two for zero, it's pretty good for him. This logistics module will die, though. That's always nice. Carry power one. It's done, so this carrier will probably hold the skins off from the base, but hey, I'll take what I can get. We're waiting for Siege to really be able to do something. <laughs> yeah, I'm making an effort, but I'm certainly not the best at that. I don't know why. When I'm casting, and I just, like... I mean, I'm saying words, but sometimes they just get garbled in my head. It happens a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed. I'll say something and just be like, wait, that's nonsense, what am I talking about? <laughs> you know, Siege is doing its job, but it's really kind of just the assault ships that are making me muscle through this bridge right now. Oh, and here come the bombers. Of course, any time the missile batteries die, it's bomber time. Oh yeah, and he had the AA turret post, but that's not gonna be long for the world. You know, I remember that couch now. I wish you still did, because it's really fun to have more than one caster. I mean, duo casting is so much better than solo casting already, but not only that, it's really... Uh, it's really nice to split up the workload. Yeah, not too much to say at this point of the game, though. Obviously, this is just, this is just ending. So. <laughs> this is what I call the lazy barrage. You're not really supposed to barrage the eco, because like, you won't kill it, right? And then you're kind of putting your guy on cooldown for nothing, because the SC will heal the guys back up. No! No, not again! Oh! Oh! Oh, no. Anyway, uh... <laughs> No, not based. It's bad. <laughs> don't don't retire yourself just like that. <laughs> uh. Anyway, there's a lot of siege out now, so now we're getting to the point where maybe I can start barraging bases and actually kill them off. You know, it's especially nice when you're playing siege like this, and you can sort of condense your opponent. <laughs> Look, I'm barraging where not. If you can condense your opponent into one area like this, now the siege just has a field day, right? Cause, you know. It just, it's all shooting at the same thing, right? Uh, I shouldn't have to explain how that works. <laughs> now, you, you've got me there. You've got me there. Thunder Dome. Yeah, you spelled it wrong. What's, what's up, Kelly? <laughs> it's Thunder Dome. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Oh, yes! <laughs> I'm mining off of his vein. I forgot I did that. <laughs> you know, the game wouldn't be complete unless I was mining off my opponent's main, right? <laughs> uh, now that is based. I'll, I'll tell you that. That is based. <laughs> no, it's Anomaly Cup. Alright, you'll, you'll see, alright? You'll see. <laughs> well, honestly, you put on a pretty good fight. I mean, like I said, I haven't seen you in the Draki Cups before, so it's always fun to see new players show up and not just be, like, total garbage. I think you did pretty well, actually. We'll move on to the next one, uh, but thanks for watching.